Are you singing his new song like I am? I love this one line. When I reach the edge of my bravery, I'll still be singing at the banks of an unparted sea. Benjamin William Hastings, welcome to Spirit 105.3, and thank you so much for writing such a lyric-rich song like That's the Thing About Praise. How do you write like that? Because I love it. <laughs> That's very bad. Uh, yeah, I don't really know how to add to that. I do feel very lucky that I feel like God um, occasionally will just drop little things in my mind. That one actually came from, I was listening to this theologian talk about when the children of Israel were at the bank. It was something to do with the Hebrew or the research and the geology. I can't remember what their synopsis of this was, but essentially their sentiment was they think when it happened, they actually had to get into the water almost up to their neck until it started to part. Wow. And I thought, isn't that a really cool picture of the and what, and what life feels like a lot of the time? Like you actually have to make a bit of a jump yourself. And it's God kind of meets you somewhere in the middle of all that. He does. And sometimes the water is cold and it's scary. So <laughs> yeah. what, what do you do, Benjamin, when you're standing on the banks of an unparted sea in your life? How do you trust God and get in the water, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, so much of the record that I wrote was kind of all about that and about the challenges with that. And even, to be honest, trusting God after certain disappointments or when things didn't work out the way that I thought they would. Like, there's another line in that song, and most days faith is climbing up a mountain that stays. Yes. And I think we all kind of relate to that, where there's those moments where, you know, you've prayed for something, and it just doesn't happen the way that you want it to. And I found myself, in the middle of all that, getting a bit disappointed with God. And I think when I eventually worked through it all, I realized that for me, it's kind of what the song talks about, that the only way for me to kind of get through this is to kind of put my attention and my focus back on who I know God to be and trust in that. And I think if that's what you're trusting on, like if you're looking upwards and you're kind of focusing on God, you end up kind of just like what step by step climbing the mountain yourself and he gets you through it. And so that to me is what the song's all about, like the only way through it to hallelujah. It's the only way through it is to focus on how good we know God to be, even when things don't go the way that we want them to. Yeah, I think it's like we want the whole map and God is saying, look, I would like to shine some light on your path and I'm right here with you. I'm not going anywhere. But, you know, we as humans, we want the whole story. And that's just not how it works here. And how would we ever know him, Benjamin, if if we got the map? Completely. That was kind of one of the revelations that I had in the middle of all this and kind of sticking on the mountain metaphor, not to overdo it. I love it. But um, one of the things was like in this kind of pilgrimage of life, like God's the destination, like he's the top of the mountain, but he's also the shepherd that kind of gets us there. And I think that's a beautiful sort of parallel. It's like, yes, there's somewhere we're going, but he doesn't just like stand in the distance and call us on. He actually gets right under our level and walks with that. And yeah, I think that's cool. That is so beautiful. And the shepherd is always close to the sheep. That's something that really helps me to consider. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Benjamin, it's so fun getting to know you. And I thought it would be cool if you shared a little bit about your family, the people you love most in this world. Well, I've got a beautiful Australian wife and two Australian kids, although I am Irish and we now live in L.A. So <laughs> it's a bit of a... <laughs> but I moved out to Australia when I was 19, ended up meeting my wife, Jess. And yeah, we were there for 10 years and then kind of recently made the move to America. And yeah, they're all doing good. My daughter has a has a school play today, which she's oh. really excited about. She's singing that song from Encanto, you know, the person that it just, 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 and, and she's very... Oh, I love the Diamond song. Yeah, yes, the pressure. Yes, yes. Oh, I, I have that on my iPhone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're doing good. Oh, that's amazing. I'm so glad. Uh, what do you love about being a dad? Oh, yeah, I love being a dad. It's been one of the great sort of joys of my of my life. I was a dad earlier than I thought I was going to be a dad. Like, we we were only married a year when (laughs) our daughter kind of surprised us. But it's been the best. She's seven now, and she's so smart and amazing. I've got a little boy who's three, and um, he's hilarious at the minute, and he's (laughs) talking so good. And, and yeah, so I love it. And it's honestly one of the hardest things of what I do is how much I have to kind of be away from them and and travel. But it's always such a joy when I come home to get to spend time with them and and hang out. I love it. Oh, I'm so happy for your kids. So you're a husband, a father, you write songs and you sing songs, beautiful songs about Jesus. Clearly, you love him, you know him well. So what's your Jesus story? Okay, well, I grew up in Ireland. I grew up in a Salvation Army church where my dad actually was like writing songs right from 
when I was a kid. So that was kind of cool. I kind of grew up thinking that was just something you did. But I feel like I properly found God when I was like 16. And I had this kind of sort of really radical sort of life-changing encounter with him that has stuck with me ever since. Wow. And I feel like with that, I've gone through a lot of journeys and wrestling and kind of I've torn the building down and rebuilt it a couple of times, so to yeah. speak. But I feel like in the middle of that, I've always been able to find this Jesus, this God that's good and one that stuck with me the whole way. I had this moment in Sydney when I was I was out there studying and um, I was trying to write like worship songs at the time, but it just wasn't working. Like all the songs I wrote just sounded like terrible versions of songs Chris Tomlin had already written. And I was at this conference. I was walking this lady to her car. That was kind of my, I was volunteering at a conference and that was kind of my my job was just to make sure the, the girls got to back to the car safely. And um, I'm walking this lady to her car, and she stops me in the middle of the rain in Sydney. I'm holding an umbrella for her. She looks me in the eyes. She's like, are you a rider? And I was like, oh, well, yeah, I am, actually. <laughs> and then she, just, well, she stopped, and she's like, I think you have this calling to express deep truth, and that's what you're meant to do. Oh. And then she just keeps walking. And I'm left there kind of like holding the umbrella, and then I kind of race after her to catch up. And it, those like words really changed my life. Out of the next few days, I kind of wrote a couple of songs that ended up taking me in an entirely new direction. And a song I wrote like that month ended up being the first song I wrote with Hillsong United. And yeah, it was kind of a crazy whirlwind thing. So I feel like all that to say, I've had these marker moments. Yes. Since that moment at 15 where I feel like God's just kind of directed me or I find him in a whole new way, if that makes sense. It does. As a matter of fact, I met Jesus. I kind of understood who he was finally when I was 16 as well. So I'm right there with you. And I had somebody speak some very powerful words over me. It's like I'm getting the good chills. Like, I totally get you. I understand. And it's neat that God gives you a hint in advance about what he's called you to do. I'm curious, what is your favorite song that you've ever written? Because I know you've written a lot. (laughs) (laughs) That's hard. Okay, there's a few. So Will I is kind of hard to to get past because that song really changed my life. And I'm really, really grateful for it. Yeah, I think I always will be. And then beyond that, there's a song I wrote on my um, record for my kids called The Father's Blessing. It's oh. kind of like a prayer that I kind of wrote for them based on some of the Irish blessings. And so I have a deep connection to that one because it's by them. And, um, and yeah. Wow. Uh, I mean, I, I do really like the song that we're, um, I don't know what the word is, pumping at the minute. The That's the thing about praise. That's been a really nice kind of joy moment. And especially the the record's got a lot it's a lot of light and shade but maybe not, I'm not going to say more shade but there's like it definitely goes into the shade and so that song kind of pulls it all back to the light in the end and yeah I'm, I'm grateful for that one it kind of came at the perfect time wow well so will I had a powerful impact on my life when God mm. called our family from South Carolina to Seattle, Washington, you know, 3,000 miles away, Benjamin, from everything familiar. And I remember where I was on the walk in my neighborhood. I was listening to that song, and I'm like, Lord, you left heaven. You came here for us. I can leave the East Coast, you know, but I just want you to know that. Um, it was yeah. it was a wonderful moment. Oh, that's amazing! Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, to, actually, ironically, I have a similar story with that song in the sense that the line in it, um, "If the wind goes where you send it," yes, so will I. That that's it. That's always been like the the kind of my favorite line and also the hardest line to sing because normally when I'm singing it, I'm not at home. You know, like I'm. <laughs> I'm somewhere in the country or somewhere in the world, away from my family and away from my kids. And so that always is the one that feels the most like worship, I guess. It's the one that, you know the way there's that David line, like, I won't bring you something that didn't cost me anything. Yes. To me, that's the line that's like, oh, yeah, this, this costs something to sing. And I actually ended up, I wrote a song on my record called While I'm in the Wind, which kind of is all about that. It's like the challenges of kind of what we do. But yeah, that's good. I mean, thanks for sharing that. That's cool. I kind of have the same same story. I'm just, yeah, it's so many similarities. It's amazing. Well, it's wonderful to meet you. Benjamin William Hastings, I hope you'll come back and be with us again on the show. So appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for making time. Oh, thank you. God bless.